Ông quay cho. The president. Le président. Veuillez vous asseoir. Ông cho mình đọc các bản to cái trong đại ca đi tới thì xã Mạc Ca. Nơi The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. During this afternoon session, uh, the chamber will be hearing the testimony of TCW 362, questions to be put by the prosecutors. La accusation aura la parole. Before calling this witness, we would like to give the floor to parties who would like to make any observation concerning the expression of the suffering made by the civil party before lunch. You may proceed. Council Angodam. Thank you, Mr. President Merci and Your Honours. I do not have any specific observation concerning any particular civil party, but I have a relevant question to be put before the Chamber for consideration. During the time when the civil party expresses her suffering, she described about the fact that for outside the scope of case file 002 stroke 01, my question is whether when the civil party is allowed to express her suffering outside the scope of the case file, whether such a statement can also be used as evidence within the case file or can this statement be used for future evidence when the parties were not given opportunity to challenge such statements? Well, I think that the parties have The president, uh, does any other party uh, to the proceeding wish uh, to also make any observation concerning the position by counsel for Yang Sari, counsel for the civil parties? You may not proceed. L'observation de Maître Angoudon, la partie civile. Vous avez la parole. Yes, Mr. President, simply it seems uh, that uh, we spoke about this yesterday and the Chamber gave us the possibility or gave the civil party the possibility to express herself regarding case 002 and the Chamber is uh, expecting a document from us and we are drafting it right now and it seems to me that all parties took advantage of the opportunity to question uh, this civil party in particular, known as defense, that in question the civil party on the entire scope of case 002. So all the parties have been able to challenge the civil party and check the credibility of what she was saying. So I don't think that there are any problems here.
the president. Thank you, Council, for this. Uh, we have already discussed about this when this Merci. same issue was raised concerning the facts when civil party was examined and also the statement civil party is supposed to make concerning his or her suffering. La de However, de to be more précise on this, the chamber will rule Mais in due course upon receiving the written submission made by fois the fois legal lawyers for the civil party. De la Council had already been instructed uh, to submit uh, such specific submission effet, so that the chamber has ground for our ruling. We already discussed this. And regarding the way of evidence, the chamber wishes to also inform the parties that during the examination, we also make it clear that the facts are relevant to case file 002 stroke 01. So the chamber is considering, based on its discretion, the facts at issue, and the chamber is convinced that it has the ability to Sera Look into the matters relevant to case file 002 uh, 01 for the time being, and we will also consider facts relevant to case file 002 at a later date. We also see uh, that uh, this is the way uh, we are proceeding. C'est ainsi que la procédure Next. suivra son cours. Court officer is now instructed to call witness TCW 362 dans le prétoire. The President, the Chamber wishes to inform the public and the parties to the proceeding that the Chamber is seized of the waiver by Mr. Yang Sari. The waiver in which uh, Mr. Yang Sari has waived his right to the testimonies of 10 uh, witnesses including the civil parties and here TCW 362 is one among the witnesses and uh, we also received uh, medical report from the hospital indicating Et that uh, Mr. Yingsari is still being admitted to the hospital at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital and he has requested uh, that uh, he has waived his right uh, to the testimony of uh, certain civil parties and witnesses due to his health Yen concern. At the same time, uh, Mr. Yingsari is uh, mentally 
Il faut toutefois noter que Yang Sari can proceed uh, hearing the testimony of TCW 360 in the absence of Mr. Yang Sari. And at the same time, the Chamber wishes to also inform the parties to the proceeding that uh, the witness is assisted uh, by ca uh, jury counsel, Mr. Lim Bunheng. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. What is Bonjour, your name, please? Monsieur le témoin, comment vous appelez-vous? Witness. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I am Bonjour, Kung, Kim. Kung Kim. I live in Prey Tang Thnung, Chiep Sub District, Tep Hok, Kampong Chanang. I have four children. Quatre enfants. Question. Apart from your full name, Kung Kim, Christian, do you have Kung any Kim, alias? Ou des alias des Response. People also call me Réponse. Ke. On aussi Ke. Question. Question. What do you do for a living? Quelle est votre profession? Response. I am the commune counselor. Je siège au conseil de commune. Question. What is your father's name? Question. Comment s'appelle votre père? Response. He is too long. Il deceased. Too long. Il est décédé. Question. What is your Question. mother's name? Et comment s'appelle votre mère? Response. She is Leng Kier, Leng deceased. Kier. Elle est décédée, elle aussi. Question, what is your wife's Question. name? Et votre épouse? Response, Réponse. she is Teng Mot. Elle s'appelle Teng Mot. Uh, the President, uh, thank you, Mr. Kung Kim. Merci, According Monsieur to Kung the report Kim by the greffier of the trial chamber, you stated that you have no relation or connection to any of the parties to the proceeding, including the accused person, Mr. Nguyen Chi Yeng Sri and Kyu Song Pong. Is that statement correct? Response, yes, it is, Your Honor. Question. Mr. Kung Kim, Question. Has, Kung Kim, have you taken an oath uh, before you take the stand? Avant de venir à la barre des témoins. Response. I have Réponse. already taken the oath. En effet, déjà prêté Question. When did you take Question. the oath Et quand avez -vous prêté and ça? where? Et où est Response. Réponse. I took the oath uh, at just a moment uh, before I appeared before the chamber. Question, was that conducted before the Iron Jenny Cela fait to the east le of this building in this vicinity? Response, yes, it is, Réponse. Your Honor. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. The Chamber would like uh, to inform you of your rights uh, before the Chamber. Mr. Kung Kim, as a witness, you can refuse to respond to any questions that are self-incriminating. You enjoy the right against self-incrimination of witnesses. And as a witness, you shall give testimonies before this chamber and you shall respond to all questions put by the parties and the judges of the bench. And at the same time, you may Refuse to respond to any questions if the questions uh, are relevant to any responses that are against uh, your cell or are in cell incriminating. And at the same time, you are to 
respond to the questions based on your experiences, what you saw, and come across during the time of the event. Mr. Kung Kim, have you ever Monsieur given Kung any Kim. interviews or being interviewed by any co-investigating judges for the last few years? Été interviewé par des enquêteurs du bureau des juges d'instruction dans les dernières années. I gave an interview to an investigating uh, to co-investigating judges uh, at my home. Des enquêteurs du bureau des juges d'instruction chez moi. Do you remember when was it? Le président. Vous souvenez-vous de la date de cet entretien? Response. I'm afraid I do not remember the exact date of the interview. De la date exacte. Question. Question. Before you appear before the chamber, Mr. Kung Kim, have Avant you reviewed the Kim, written record of your interview that you gave before the investigating judge to refresh your memory? Response. Yes. Your Honor, I have read uh, the oui, written Juge. record, the questions and answers uh, that uh, are conducted by the co-investigating judges and I myself. Question, Et according to ma... your best recollection, is the account uh, in the written record consistent to the interview you gave to the investigators previously. Response. Yes, it is. Uh, the account is consistent oui. to the one I gave before the co-investigating judge. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. Now, to the prosecution, the Chamber would like uh, to inform you that uh, you will allot it, uh, you will be allotted uh, the time and uh, opportunity to put questions to this witness before the other parties. You may now proceed. Mr. Wayne Horn. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Bon good afternoon, Monsieur Your Président. Honours. And good afternoon, Mr. Witness and parties to the proceeding who are in the courtroom today. I am from the office of the co-prosecutor. Co I have a few questions to be put to you. And before I proceed with the questions, uh, with Avant Mr. President's leave, I would like uh, to hand over the record of the interview he gave to the investigating judge before the uh, before and the reason I would like to hand this over to the witness because uh, I would like uh, to make sure that he has uh, access to the document pour il est and accès to ease document. our time in questioning him. The President, could you please identify the le document président. first? Code du document, je vous prie. Mr. Wayne Hart, Mr. President, Mr. this document is D166-76. The President, uh, can you uh, repeat that? Is it 26 or 24? Le Président, c'est 24 ou 26? Veuillez répéter, je vous prie. Mr. Wayne Hart, it, this uh, D166 stroke uh, 76.
Mr. Benhart, uh, my sincere apologies, uh, Mr. President and Your Honours. Indeed, it is D-166-74. Uh, the President, uh, you may proceed, uh, and the court officer is now instructed to hand over the document Je to the witness. Question. Mr. Kung Kim, perhaps uh, it is not yet an appro appropriate time for you to uh, look at the record of the interview as yet. Uh, I would like to proceed with a few questions first before we refer to the document. Uh, can you please tell the chamber when you joined the army? La date à laquelle vous avez rejoint Response. I joined the army in 1974. Question. Question. How old were you at that time? Response. Réponse. I was 15 years old. 15 ans à Question. Question. Can you please describe uh, the military structure concerning the North Zone Division 310 and your roles uh, before 1975? Indeed, your roles before April 1975. Response. I joined the army in 1974, en en as stated, in Kampong Tom. Uh, Later on, I was transferred uh, to the North Zone Military suite, Complex. And by early 1975, I 1900. was again transferred, transferred to Pregdam location to fight a battle uh, that lead to Question. Prior to the 17th of April 1975, had you attended any military meetings when you were in the army? Jamais assisté à des réunions militaires. I attended uh, meetings, effet, but uh, at militaire. the level of the battalion Mais and the company and, and, and the subgroup, uh, I never attended uh, any meetings uh, at the regiment level. I was rather young at that time. Jeune. I was um, uh, very young. Question. Question. Do you recall who led such meetings? Vous qui animait les réunions? Response. During Réponse. the meetings, Pon, Pendant les réunions, who Pon, was uh, the head of the platoon, qui était le chef would de be platon, leading the meeting and another group leader by the Et name of Lam also Lam chaired the meetings. Qui, uh, lui aussi les Question. Question. Do you still remember the content or the agenda of the meeting? Response. During the meetings, Réponse. we would be lectured on the plan to attack Phnom Penh. It was the military tactics, uh, how to be prepared to attack the city. Question. Question. What kind of instructions or orders were you given at that time? Quels étaient les ordres que vous avez reçus à l'époque? 
response. Repose. I was receiving order to join the forces to attack Phnom Penh pour l'attaquer Phnom Penh through Prek Pno battlefields Phnom Krong and other battlefields leading to Phnom Penh question can you please uh, Look at the copy I just uh, handed over to you and look at question and answer number three. I would like to read the, the EAN numbers of the document in Khmer, which is 0027-0163, English EAN 0027-8681, French EAN 0048-60961. I would like to read from the statement as follows. At the same précédent. time, I received orders to shoot and kill right away any soldiers or anyone dressed as a soldier. Toute personne habillée comme un soldat. My question to you is, Ma question from donc, whom did you receive this order? Monsieur. Qui vous a donné cet ordre de tirer à vue? Response. I received from the head of uh, the platoon, comrade Pon. Du chef de plateau, de and le camarade the, the order was rendered from the company. And as a young soldier, I did not attend soldat, such meeting where the order was rendered. But as a person in the plateau, and I had to receive order from upper echelon. Des échelons supérieurs. Question. Question. How was the order uh, rendered? Uh, is it it, was it the way it, the instructions uh, could have been uh, delivered? And were the orders or instructions uh, rendered through meetings or through other means? Cela a été fait dans le cadre de réunions ou par d'autres moyens? Response. Réponse. Orders normally rendered through meetings. En général, and les ont été also, des instructions could be given at the battlefields Et aussi des ordres pour and sur le champ de uh, we were instructed that if we saw any civilian uh, facing us in the opposite direction Et then we had to shoot them si donc nous devions croiser des ennemis en face de nous il fallait les tirer à vue Lúc ban miền bà sa mánh tha oi ta chup you see it just now chun nơi khang mok as long as uh, you met uh, the people who blocked uh, your soldiers, or if you found uh, any uh, soldiers uh, blocking you or in front of your soldiers, you would uh, shoot them. Is that uh, what you are telling the court? But Response. Yes, we Réponse. were ordered to oui, shoot. Nous avons reçu uh, but de as I said, uh, we were the Khmer Rouge soldiers, dit, and the soldiers that we Rouge. were supposed to attack Et were the uh, Lonno soldiers, and they were considered uh, external soldiers. Question. Question. Uh, you then uh, receive uh, this order, but did you uh, carry out uh, this order against the civilian as well, or you only shoot uh, the Lonnol soldier? Did you, in other words, did you comply with uh, the order? Response. Upon receiving the order, 
lorsqu'on a reçu l'ordre in both the rear and the battlefields i never met uh, civilians uh, i only encountered soldiers de bataille, we, je pas uh, clashed civils. with the soldiers uh, we uh, never saw civilians in the battlefield avec des soldats nous n'avons jamais vu de civils uh, sur le champ de bataille khiem som question nous avons my look question I would like to expand a, a bit further on Et this uh, point. Un peu, uh, ce Your <coughs> squad domaine. Donc, votre uh, killed uh, civilians as well as uh, non-war soldiers. Civils, I would like to know before um, people or civilians or non-war soldiers were killed avant or shot, uh, uh, did they, de for example, raise any uh, vice flag to surrender or retreat? Uh, if you look at uh, question and answer 17, on, no, si rather, uh, question, uh, question 7, question and answer, the president. Uh, witness, president. please hold on. The National Monsieur Defense Monsieur Council for Mr. Kim Sampong is on his feet. Uh, uh, you may proceed, Council. Council, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Just now, Merci, the National Monsieur Prosecutor uh, said uh, that it was the statement uh, of the witness uh, before us uh, that uh, his soldiers in his court uh, would kill civilians uh, even if uh, they raised a white flag uh, to retreat. But actually, it was not a statement from the mouth of the witness. The witness did not state that, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Wayne Hood. In question, in the question I mentioned, the investigator of the OCIJ asked the witness that when they were uh, advancing on the offensive to Phnom Penh, did his uh, squad uh, kill or shoot uh, any civilian? And at that time, uh, he mentioned in his statement that uh, during the shooting, uh, it was uh, usual that uh, certain people were killed, but those were not the target uh, of the soldiers. So I would like to ask him to explain when he was shooting uh, the soldiers uh, the, and the civilians uh, whether or not those people had uh, raised a white flag or so, and then uh, you still killed them. Et, et the si president. Cas, Prosecutor, can you please uh, base your question on a very precise portion of the uh, witness statement? If I look at uh, this uh, witness statement, uh, it does not come in the order you indicated to uh, the witness. Uh, so it is advisable that you uh, refer to a specific question uh, in the uh, written record of interview, particularly Particularly, you should make mention the relevant uh, ER and number uh, for other parties uh, to uh, refer uh, to the relevant uh, portion of this. Uh, that's why there was a question raised uh, by the Defense Council for Mr. Q. Sampong. Prosecutor, thank you, Mr. President. L'accusation, je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. If you look at uh, question uh, seven, I, I, I put the order in this uh, written record of interview. Uh, in Khmer 00, uh, uh, French 00, English 00, the President, could you please um, rephrase your last question? And the question should be uh, based uh, on a, the substance of the written record of interview of this witness. Uh, you have to be um, uh, precise on the basis on which you ask the question, because it uh, seems that uh, 
uh, you base on something very new, and then you say that uh, there were question seven, you were referring to question seven or so, but other parties might not uh, be aware of the order of questions in the written record of interview. Mr. Weyhut, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, put my question again. You said uh, in your uh, statement uh, that when I fired, I must have hit and killed some, but I never first capture or shot and kill any of them. So my question to him, whether or not there were exchanges of fire uh, uh, with uh, those uh, people or soldiers, or did you shoot them even if they had already waved or raised uh, their white flag. So the President, I note the Defense uh, Council, uh, International uh, Defense uh, Council for Mr. Uh, Nunchier uh, is on his feet. You may proceed, Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think it would be clear if, clearer if the um, Cambodian the prosecutor would also read out the question that is asked just before uh, the answer that uh, he just read out. The question that was asked was, during the attack on Phnom Penh, did you or your squad shoot any soldiers or civilians? And then the answer is, when I fired, I must have hit and killed some, but I never first captured and then shot and killed any of them. I think that makes clearer, more clear to the witness um, that um, the question related to shooting either soldiers or civilians, and uh, the witness has just stated that he never saw any civilians while in combat, so I think it would be fair for the witness to read out the entirety of the question and answer segment. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, prosecutor, please uh, be reminded uh, that you have uh, limited time uh, to put the question to the witness, and your first and uh, question uh, is not uh, clear. And there has been uh, comments uh, by other parties, so please uh, try to make sure that your question is precise and clear. And in addition, um, the questions uh, that you phrased uh, just now was uh, bit uh, different from the statement uh, that he uh, provided to the investigator of the OCIJ. And you asked the question, a literal question, uh, that uh, whether this uh, witness had shot uh, and killed any civilians or soldiers. So this question is incriminatory in nature to this uh, witness. The Mr. Wayne Hood, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to um, now rephrase uh, the question. In the same uh, question, you told investigators uh, that uh, when I fired, I must have hit and killed some, but I never first. Uh, that's what you say in that. And I would, my question that I would like to expand on this, uh, when you shoot uh, or hit those soldiers, uh, did you uh, shoot at them when they actually fire back at you, or when they had already waved or raised uh, the white flag? That's my question I would like to ask uh, for uh, you to Mr. Weinhut, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, do you le understand my Monsieur question le and why I will compris ma question? Uh, try to simplify si ça pas le cas, je vais tenter de la simplifier. Réponse. On this particular point, as per the order I received, précis, we had to selon attack les ordres reçus, nous devions attaquer uh, them. But the uh, killing and shooting 
uh, against the soldiers and civilians. That was uh, the time when we were advancing on the offensive to Phnom Penh. And at that time, we uh, uh, hit and killed uh, uh, many civilians. But, uh, in Phnom Penh, uh, there were fires every day. So uh, it, we could not be 100% sure that those people had raised their white flag because there were people who surrendered and retreated, but there were others who were among them as well. So we were not sure. So we had to uh, shoot uh, those who were there. So in document uh, in Khmer 00 27 in French 00 question order 11. Question numéro 11. In the witness uh, written record of interview, and I would like to read Donc, out this portion. Answer, portion. I saw bodies floating Réponse. in the water. Vu des corps qui dans I saw a few bodies of lonely soldiers and continuously saw many bodies of people who had died along the streets, and some were bloodstained, and some were in the road and had been run over by our vehicles from uh, Kilometer 6 uh, all the way to Chojongba Bridge. On this uh, particular statement, you saw those dead bodies. Why didn't you uh, carry uh, those uh, dead bodies? Why did you uh, drive over uh, those dead bodies? Was it because there were too many bodies scattered everywhere along the street and you could not avoid running over them? But <coughs> Uh, on the day when we uh, uh, attacked uh, Phnom Penh, uh, we were on the trucks, and at that time the trucks uh, did not transport the ordinary civilians. We uh, uh, transported uh, soldiers, so the soldier had to uh, be reinforced into the city in order to capture the city. So we were, uh, we had our mission. Uh, so we uh, had to uh, drive uh, over there, and at that time our soldiers uh, uh, were lost in terms of geography location of the city, uh, what we had to do at that time, we had to come and assemble at the uh, specific target that we were supposed to station, and that was it. Question. I just wanted to know why didn't you just uh, drive away uh, from the uh, dead bodies? Uh, why did you uh, have to run over those dead bodies? Avez-vous estimé qu'il fallait passer dessus avec vos véhicules? <coughs> As I said in my statement, at that time the situation was chaotic and everything was in the rush and uh, the dead bodies were scattered everywhere from one place to another. I was not, I was not the driver, I was on the track. There was another driver. We tried to avoid running over those dead bodies, but we could not always avoid uh, running over those dead bodies because it was everywhere. Thank you. I move on then. Question when you were uh, leading uh, your squad and your forces uh, uh, to Phnom Penh and then you finally captured Phnom Penh, uh, uh, were you promoted to a higher position in command? Response. When we were fighting to capture Phnom Penh, I were not... Uh, uh, Phnom Penh. holding any position, I uh, was uh, uh, an pas ordinary de, de rank and file combatant. Uh, uh, 0027 and in French 0027 
donc en français 00 4897 Uh, you um, went to uh, drive the people out of their houses. And you went to search in every house in the city and then drive people uh, away. I would like to know uh, when you went to carry out this mission, uh, did you receive any order from anyone? And if so, who were they? Response. Réponse. When I uh, got to Phnom Penh, uh, we had to station at a particular target nous we were assigned to. So uh, at first, uh, the forces were not mobilized to search uh, the house. We had to control our own uh, respective force. And uh, in Phnom Penh at that time, the situation was uh, chaotic. Uh, there were still uh, soldiers of Lonos and Khmeru soldiers. So first of all, when we got into Phnom Penh, we had to control our own force. And after that, uh, there were instructions uh, from the uh, platoon. The platoon received order from the uh, company and uh, battalion uh, or so. And there was another special force which were tasked uh, to uh, evict people out of the city. However, there were people uh, who remained in the houses, particularly those who live in the upper story uh, building. So those who were, uh, those soldiers who were stationed uh, in Phnom Penh uh, had to conduct the final search uh, in the house in order to ensure that everyone uh, was evicted and left their houses. Thank you. Question. So did you receive any particular Donc, order against those who resisted uh, leaving their home? Uh, what were the instructions uh, from the uh, superior? Response. There was a plan to evacuate people uh, out of Phnom Penh. Uh, the large majority of people left the city. There were only a small minority of people left in the houses, and uh, soldiers were tasked uh, to conduct the uh, final search. And when we uh, conducted the search, we uh, encountered soldiers, and we exchanged uh, fires, and we killed uh, some of them. But as for uh, civilians, we had to uh, bring them down and then uh, we had to order them to leave and these were done by the uh, battalions or companies or platoons and uh, I was under the instruction of Hun uh, who was the uh, commander attached uh, to uh, my squad and section. Question. In the same document in English, 0027-0165, that is in Khmer. In English, 0027-8683. In French, 0048-6097. Uh, for your convenience in your uh, document, that is question order 12. The question by the investigator was, was, were there really orders from the people to leave, and if they did not leave, they were to be killed? And then you responded, yes, those were the orders. They came through Tajim. As always, do you stand by this statement? Response. Jim, Jim, he was the uh, commander Jim of a battalion. Un chef de bataillon, un commandant de bataillon. When the first wave of people Lorsque la première vague in the city were evacuated, the uh, then there was another evacuée. order uh, to search a every house to find uh, those who resist leaving, and those people were accused of being enemies. So uh, there were orders all the way through the uh, uh, regiments, uh, battalions, as well as company and platoons uh, uh, to ensure peloton, that uh, there were no any other people other than our soldiers. Uh, to uh, remain uh, in the city. Uh, as for 
others who were not our soldiers were uh, considered uh, enemy. But in reality, I myself uh, had never uh, captured any one of them, and I had never uh, killed any one of them. But we did receive orders. Because a uh, question, uh, due question. to the urgency of the evacuation of people out of, of Phnom Penh, uh, what did you uh, tell the civilian when you uh, ordered the civilian to leave uh, their homes? Uh, what the uh, real order uh, you handed down to them? Response. Response. Upon receiving the uh, orders and plan Une of evacuation, uh, actually my squad was not tasked uh, to evacuate the people. Actually, there were a special forces uh, tasked to evacuate the people out of the city, as all my forces were to be stationed in one specific target uh, in order to uh, defend our target. So once the people were evacuated, there were minority people who stayed uh, behind so we have to ensure that those people left the city as well. Mm, so thank you. So I move on to my next question. You say there were people who left uh, later than others, uh, and your task was to make sure that they left. And how about in the hospital? Did you go to the hospital? Were there any patient or people in the hospital who left behind? Were there any patient or people who left behind? Response. When I got to Phnom Penh. I received uh, uh, the instruction to defend my target. I had to station in the target. And for myself, I did not know. I never went to the hospital. We were instructed to station in a specific location, so we had to uh, defend our target. So we were not allowed to travel uh, anywhere at our own will. So we have to be stationed exactly as what we instructed uh, to do. Uh, on Question. 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 I have only one final question for you. Encore une dernière question à vous poser. In relation to the evacuation of people, did you ever see the children group who were waiting for their parents, for their fathers or mothers, and they uh, did not want to leave because they insisted that uh, they had to wait for their parents. Did you ever encounter this situation? Response. When the plan to evacuate uh, people uh, le plan were de la population executed, a été the, mis en the oeuvre, city streets were crowded uh, with uh, de, people uh, marching uh, out of the city, and its situation uh, were chaotic. Uh, we never saw uh, any separate groups of children uh, uh, loitering on the street or so. Uh, uh, dans, Mr. Van uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Kung Kim, uh, for responding to my questions. Uh, I thank you very much uh, for your time. And Mr. President, uh, that is all for me, and I would like to hand over to my international colleague uh, to uh, continue our lines of questioning. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours, and good afternoon, Council, and good afternoon, Mr. Kung Kim. Thank you for coming to assist the court in searching for the truth and 
uh, answering my colleagues' questions. Um, I'm going to follow up with some of these areas that you've already Poursuivre euh, la ligne des questions qui ont déjà été posées pour pouvoir les approfondir. Je vais commencer par um, l'ordre des ordres qui um, euh, ont été communiqués aux membres de um, votre division. And you've already told my colleague Alors, about some of these orders. Um, um, what I'd like to look at is how the orders were uh, communicated. Um, in your statement, D166-74, um, there is a relevant passage, and this is at Committee RN 0027-0164. And this is the passage question. Did your superiors tell you how to handle prisoners and the people? Answer. Vous ont donné At the time, I received orders not to take prisoners. Anyone in the, in the vicinity of the city's defensive belt was to be shot right away. No matter where the soldiers were, they were to be shot at once. These orders came from Division Chairman Horn through Regimental Chairman Song and Battalion Chairman Yim all the way down to me. My first question is, question, you mentioned um, earlier, I think you mentioned the individual Hoon. Um, Hoon. Can you confirm, confirm for us that it was the divisional commander who issued the order and that the order came down to you to be implemented, to not take any prisoners? Response. Réponse. Upon receiving the orders, Lorsque I did not receive orders from the en fait, que reçu, je ne pas upper echelon. I knew that uh, Un je was que the commander était and le Song et que was Song from the regiment venait, when Jim uh, jumped de from the battalion. And these orders were rendered from uh, them, and I never attended any meetings with the avec, uh, regiment and battalion. I only attended meetings at the platoon. Thank you. Um, because in your statement you indicate that the order had come from the division chairman. Emmené, uh, uh, um, de could you tell us uh, how you knew division, that orders dire, would be coming from uh, the division chairman? Response. I learned uh, this through the plan of uh, the plan the company uh, who said that uh, the orders were rendered uh, from Donc, division uh, and that the, the lower level of the military division, structure had to uh, implement que, uh, such orders. De la Thank you. Avait, um, um, pour fonction les, ces -là. And was that common as part of your military duties? Um, il était did you normally receive orders um, coming from the division de level? Des was that de, something that was done in the ordinary course of battles? Or was it, was it only on this occasion? Was that normal in all combats? Or was it specific method that was applied at that moment? Response. During the fighting, we never met in persons uh, with 
jamais rencontré en personne uh, le commandement de, de la division ou du régiment, ni leur commandant au niveau même du bataillon. Nous avons reçu les ordres du chef de peloton ou de compagnie. Nous n'avons jamais été en présence des autres nouveaux groupes ou des groupes différents qui pouvaient nous communiquer des Thank ordres you. ou nous faire um, communiquer des ordres. Am I correct in understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that all military operations in your division were commanded by Owen, by Ta Owen? Ta Owen. Response. Yes, it is correct. Uh, Thank you. Um, and do you know who Ta Un reported to. Savez-vous qui était le supérieur de Ta Un? Response. As already indicated, I know no one from battalion level up to the division. Because I am familiar with only the persons who were in charge of the platoon or company, no more than that. Qui était en charge du peloton et de la compagnie et rien d'autre. Thank you. We might come back to um, one in a little bit, um, a little bit later. Merci peut-être répondre sur le sujet de ta une par la suite. If we look at uh, your statement again. Uh, and this is at Khmer 00270164 towards the bottom of that page um, in French 00486097 and in English 002767. Um, you describe there that your squad um, was based in and controlled the north section of the city. Uh, I'm interested in the next passage. Quote, we had to conduct searches and drive the people away. And there were no rules at all against shooting the people. I never saw anyone who had shot them be punished for having done so. Some had morals and did not fire. Those who had no morals did fire. Um, can you tell us how it was that you knew that some of the soldiers Comment vous saviez uh, were que certains des soldats firing at, at the people in, in, in the city. Ils tiraient sur les gens dans la ville. But Response. At different target location, Réponse. there was no rules or regulation on Différents endroits, il n'y avait pas uh, de not règles shooting people uh, rendered to us. And during gens. operations, dans le cadre des sometimes uh, we encountered with the remaining soldiers, the soldiers who could exchange fire with us. Des soldats, des, and des the uh, casualties qui, uh, were not avoided, uh, and sometimes uh, the fires were exchanged when the people were caught across uh, the uh, uh, in between, and uh, that also led to some civilian casualties. Moving on with that in that same statement, the next passage, um, si so immediately below the section we just read, suivant, celui que je viens de lire. Um, you say the following, 
As for driving the people out, that was difficult because some remaining Longnol soldiers were throwing grenades from up above and killing Khmer Rouge soldiers. And some of the people up above refused to leave. Therefore, we received orders to cut off the water and electricity for a half month. Then we captured the people who came down and sent them to our superiors. Can I ask you how long after the 17th of April um, was it that you were ordered to cut off water supply in order to drive the remaining people out. Response. After Phnom Penh liberation and after noting that it is not easy to evacuate the remaining people who are living up above who still could cook their rice because there was still running water available to them. So upon orders, uh, it was the plan by the division to our platoon to cut off water supply so that uh, people could no longer access to such water supply and soldiers would be able to use the water that could have been stored in a reservoir or tanks uh, but there was no longer a running water but I um, that was uh, the order thank you um, in order to explore some of these areas further, I want to ask you about um, another interview that uh, we have a record of. Um, do you recall being interviewed by uh, people from the Documentation Centre of Cambodia in July of 2002? But, um, but Response. I yes, I do. Your Honours, we have on the case file um, a, a transcription of this interview. It is document 19.96. Um, it runs into well over 50 pages in Khmer. Um, with your leave, uh, I would hand it to uh, the witness and ask some more questions. The President, you may proceed. Court officer is now instructed to bring the document from the prosecutor to the witness for examination. Thank you, Your Honours. Um, Mr. Kung Kim, I I'm not sure whether you have seen this document before. Um, it appears to be a transcription of a, of a taped uh, interview. Um, can I ask you first if you, if you have seen it before? Yes, the document I'm holding now, I have never seen it. The President, the court officer is now instructed to retrieve the document from the witness. Just to confirm, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Kun Kim, you've just told us that you do recall uh, this particular interview. And, um, it does look like a transcription that might have been made following the interview. Um, so I'm not surprised that you haven't necessarily seen it. Um, in this uh, document, you discussed uh, the same topics that we're discussing today. And I want to ask you 
a few questions to see if we can elaborate in a bit more detail. Um, and this is a section that deals with the uh, problem of um, Khmer Rouge, uh, rather Khmer Republic um, soldiers who were encountered. Um, du sujet des soldats de la République Khmer. And you, you, according to this transcript, you said the following. Vous dit ce qui suit. The soldiers of my unit, Les and I will give the ERNs Moi, first, je vais, je vais I apologize. Uh, the Khmer ERNs 00054834. French 0040330 and English 0066338074874. The soldiers of my unit just arrived from the forests were Les wearing the uniform made from polyester material. Our polyester. uniform was thin Nos and in green color. Était, uh, et Our mince cap was sewed with different kind of thread. Notre, uh, Some of our soldiers who had arrived in town earlier became overexcited. When they found the long soldiers' uniforms were still new, they put them on. Then, when the next wave of troops arrived, they misidentified them, so they shot at each other, killing many of our own troops during that confusion. And let me ask you about that first. Um, do you recall that, that situation of some of uh, your soldiers or some of the Khmer Rouge soldiers putting on uniforms of long 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 and being shot following the fall of Phnom Penh. Uh, Phnom Penh. Response. When we were entering Phnom Penh, we noted the chaotic situation. The people also were confused, and the soldiers were at, time, at the same time confused. First, uh, people were scattered. Our forces was not properly managed, and the soldiers who were ill-disciplined when they saw the uniforms, the military uniform, took them on, and at that time, people were misidentified and fire were exchanged, and uh, some soldiers who were from the jungle were too overjoyed uh, with the victory the when they came to Phnom Penh. They drove the car so heureux. fast that they crashed and killed themselves de la as well. Ils ont des the president, très uh, par, thank you, council. Uh, thank thank you, the party. Uh, we now Merci should adjourn tous. briefly, and the court will adjourn for 20 minutes. Court officer is instructed to assist uh, the witness during the adjournment, and the court uh, will adjourn now and resume by 3 o'clock.